welcome. Of course, it's a great privilege and honor to be sitting here today with you, Damon. How did you like Canada? Coming to Canada, I know um, your first time in Canada giving a seminar, uh, first time in our capital, Canada's capital. Any big surprises? Kind of what you thought? A little sleepy, a little excitement. Um, how did it make you feel? And did your family enjoy it as well? Um, to be honest, I think it's been amazing. Um, but for me, Canada is picturing countryside, <laughs> magazines, right, right. and obviously I've kind of seen all of that. Um, it's very relaxed over here. The scenery is stunning. Everyone's been brilliant who we've met. It's, it's definitely a place I'd, I'd like to come back and revisit. I thought it was fantastic. Of course, we'd love to have you again. <laughs> and, and, and thank you, Damien. Appreciate your time today. You, Damien, could you just tell us briefly a little bit about yourself, like your accomplishments, what got you, uh, not what got you into what time, but definitely your accomplishments, some kind of some of your titles, your training background? I started training in 1994. I'd have been wow. about 14 at the time. Nice. Um, I kind of uh, started off as a junior, so I found a lot with uh, shin pads, uh, head guard, and as I progressed to the ranks from there, I kind of won the uh, Midland areas, which is kind of like my area, then I won the English title, and then uh, schoolboy British title, then I moved to the adult ranks, so I was 16, and I started fighting adults. Um, again, after about a year from there, I won an English title as an adult, then a British title, then I started fighting internationally at 17, and then um, I won my first European title, I I think I was 21, I think. I've been 21 when I won the first European title. Then I won a couple more from there. Um, from then on, I went to live in Thailand for a while. Um, I won the Hong Kong Championship from Thailand. So I was from Thailand, I flew to Hong Kong. I fought one championship there. Went back, carried on fighting for a bit. Then I went back to the UK. And then from there in the UK, I won uh, two world titles and a uh, fourth European title. It's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. I guess kind of follow up, maybe take us back a little bit. What got you interested in Muay Thai uh, for the first place? Because you started as a very young man. Was there some kind of point of inspiration that really connected to you, kind of brought you to the sport or something that attracted you to our, our, the Muay Thai community, I suppose? To be honest, I've kind of always been interested in martial arts. I'd watch mm -hmm. like beautiful martial art films when I was a bit younger. Blood sport? Yeah, that was, <laughs> that, that was mine too. But um, the, literally the gym was probably... 300 meters away from my school, okay. a couple of my classmates started training, asked if I wanted to come along, went along, and then kind of like the rest is history, like there's no real amazing story or anything, it's just literally the gym was very close to my school and I'd pass it every day. What do you think the future of, uh, of Muay Thai is? You have to elaborate on that question. In the sense that it's come from almost, I mean, I know my first experience was literally watching <coughs> Bloodsport with Van Damme when he fights Paco, but um, since then it's just grown. It's just grown that people have an awareness of it they didn't have even five years ago. Um, it keeps on expanding. What do you think is next for Muay Thai? Just quite recently, it's been kind of um, recognized by the Olympics. It's not in the Olympics right, yet, right. but obviously they're obviously looking at it under consideration. If it gets into the Olympics from now, I think it's gonna explode. Because obviously uh, people then can train as a goal where they can right. obviously represent their country on like a worldwide stage. I think if it doesn't get into the Olympics without being horrible, I think it's probably gonna stay kind of like mm -hmm. where it is as like a niche sport. But then other like, things like, um, like the MMA, like right. the UFC and stuff, they're gonna be still attracted to Muay Thai because obviously that's the most effective striking yeah. art from there. But I think as uh, promotions, I think it will stay where it is unless it does actually get recognized by the Olympics. Nice. Uh, Muay Thai is a global community, as we were just uh, speaking about. How does training in Thailand, say, differ from training in the UK and now being with us here in Canada? To be honest, um, so I, I, I haven't seen how a class is structured here, but I'm going to guess it's very similar to lots of the UK. So obviously, right. like back home, I'd probably do a quick warm up, mm -hmm. then you'd probably shadow box, then you'd hip pads, like a technique, hip pads, then you'll probably spar and maybe clinch. It's right. exactly the same in Thailand, but it's just a lot longer. It's like your quick warm up is a five mile run. Then right. you'll come in, then you'll shadow box, which could be like five rounds or so, three mm. to five rounds. Then you'll do pads. The only difference with Thailand is a lot of it is one on one. Okay. To where like uh, your pad hold is your trainer. While you're on the pads, the rest of the people that are on the class will be on the bag. And what you do, you kind of swap over once you've done your like, transition from there. Mm. And obviously, then you'd start clinching, but again, their clinching is 20 to 45 minutes right. every day. So, obviously, it's just constantly yeah. going from there. Uh, when I was there, they'd probably only spar maybe three times a week. Okay. And obviously, it's a spar, so we put clinching was every day. Right. So, everything's very similar, but it's just longer, but it's more one on one in Thailand. Mm. But in the West, that just, it just can't work because obviously, people don't come to train to make a living from competing. Right. But in Thailand, they do. Mm.
why do you think that, in my experience, I guess all the best people I've met in gyms and in the martial arts, whereas maybe people outside of the sport think it's for, you know, brawlers and kind of tough guys, but when you get into it, how do you think Muay Thai develops people and what do you think attracts I think when you look at, the sport? Oh, sorry, um, I think when you look at most um, combat sports, yeah. Muay Thai is probably one of the most um, uh, respectful because when right. you obviously look at boxing, there's a lot of trash talk. You know, a lot, mm. obviously that's the kind of sold the tickets. Sound like the MMA now, it's a lot of trash talk, a lot of bravado. So obviously Muay Thai, it's because I think because of where it comes, like their heritage comes from Thailand, there is a lot more uh, respect involved. There isn't any um, like bad mouthing of each other. They're kind of you're in, the, you're in the same position as the other person. So obviously right. it's not about trying to make yourself above them. If that makes sense. Obviously you want to. It does. I do them in the fight, but it's not about trying to make yourself feel bigger and better than what they are. I think as well, because with a lot of the shows, a lot of it comes from friends and families, ticket sales. Mm-hmm. So obviously right. it's not about trying to get more and more and more people to come and just watch the fight, because obviously most of the time, they've just, they've just like I said, they've sold it to their people in the gym, their friends, family, and everything that way. So I think, I'm waffling on a bit now, but I love it. Yeah, but I think it, it, it's just um, like the I, I can't comment on people that do jiu-jitsu tournaments or right. the wrestling stuff, but I'm going to assume that they're very respectful as well because of where they've come from and how it's not in a public eye as much. I think mm-hmm. because of the other combat sports are in public eye, that's why there's a lot of trash talking going gotcha. on. It makes a lot of sense to me. A related point: What do you think Muay Thai has to teach uh, for younger people? People kind of coming up looking for themselves myself when I'm, I went to live in Thailand I was very much on my own there wasn't I didn't have any friends I had acquaintances and obviously most of them were, were Thai uh, being on my own or being on your own makes you think quite a lot and obviously you kind of like look back on my career at that time yeah. and probably the the smallest thing that I got from learning Muay Thai is actually learning how to punch and kick and knee everything else is obviously like vastly important obviously like your confidence your goal setting um, just being able to be around like different people I think right. it's obviously it's, it's a big skill set to have that you can take in other areas of your life where you might have a driving test or it might have an exam coming up and obviously the same skills that you kind of get from your training not just in Muay Thai but in any martial art right. you can like transition into other aspects I totally agree. What advice would you give to new people kind of coming up in sport? People, either maybe an existing athlete looking to compete in time, or someone more like the majority of us looking for that real kind of confidence and community, the chance to kind of shine and really come into themselves. What, what advice would you give to some uh, new people coming into the sport? Obviously, the obvious one is obviously make sure you train hard, but obviously it's about like belief and intent. Okay, so obviously you have to kind of intend to do what you're going to do, and obviously you've got to believe in yourself in doing it as well if you start kind of second guessing then you're not going to be able to progress and obviously that slight doubt will probably like hold you back mm. so you have to like I say you have to go at it 100% so that's what you're going to go for don't go half hearted it's a painful sport if you go at it half hearted so obviously you're going to have to give it your all and what advice would you give to kind of new amateur fighters maybe someone taking their first fight to kind of address that little voice of doubt and how do you uh, how do you deal with that well for me um, because I've obviously I've competed so much is yeah. obviously I still like if I was to do it now I'd still get the same doubts now but as they come in I just kind of no that's not going to happen this is what's going to and I just kind of like shut it out and try and obviously think positive because what you have to think is uh, say if you look at your your brain your, yes. your mind likes you wants to protect you so it gives you these doubts because obviously it doesn't want you to be put into that situation. Does that make sense? It's trying to hold you back. So obviously it's just your mind trying to protect you. But obviously you'll be fine. You know you'll be fine because you've been training hard. You know you're strong. You know you're fit. So you just got to tell that little voice, no, that's don't worry. That's not going to happen. This is what's going to happen. And obviously then just kind of focus on the positives. And like when you do fight, try and visualize any aspect that you're going to get into and visualize getting out of that scenario so if you might think oh what if I get caught in a clinch it doesn't matter because I can do this what if I get stuck on the ropes it doesn't matter I can do this no, right. just literally right. just so you can kind of go through maybe your worst case scenarios understanding they're not worst case scenarios you've actually trained for this you actually have answers to that so would your mental preparation kind of equal your physical preparation uh, just as much uh, fighting if you think of it is probably 90% mental and 10% physical because obviously your body has to your brain tells it to Right. So if you start second guessing yourself and that person, your opponent isn't, then sure. it's going to be a tough night for you. 
I know you took a lot of chances to become a professional fighter. Um, there's no guarantees, and you know you always have to advance that forward. What advice would you give to somebody maybe struggling with their dream, maybe having a hard time, maybe thinking to quit? What advice would you give just to push a little harder, take a little further? So, like from my own experience, where um, obviously I was already kind of like well accomplished. Um, I'd fought for a world title in 2007, but I'd lost. Mm -hmm. If I'd have won that title, I probably would have retired at that point. Wow, isn't that amazing? But from there, because I didn't win it, I took some time out and then I'd come back. And that, that my career's been kind of split into three stages. So that third stage was the best stage nice. of my career. So if you just kind of, if you quit, you don't know what you're missing out on. Right, I so if that. you've got other people that are believing in you and telling you, no, you should carry on. They, they obviously, they want the best for you and they can see that you've got some so I think just persevere and get through. Life isn't easy, so you might as well just <laughs> try and roll the punches. I agree with that.